everybody. I'm down in the garage today because I don't have a lot of room in the house anymore. Um, this is a Marrow 3DW. I'm reading off a sheet here so I can tell you what, what's going on. So this is a Marrow 3DW that I got and I want to use it to do um, patch edges like this. Okay, hopefully you guys can, uh, I don't know if it's going to focus on that. Hopefully you guys can see that. Um, hang on a minute, let me see if I can get it to focus. Yeah, so I just did this patch here um, on this machine and uh, hang on, focus. Anyway, um, I'm going to show you how how, did, how I did this on this machine. This is, I was trying to recreate the look of a MG3U machine and I'm trying to do it economically. So this is an M3DW machine, which I grabbed um, off Marketplace for $200. And um, I did do a rebuild on it. I changed, um, gosh, I guess like three gaskets, three quart gaskets and the oil filter in the bottom of the machine. And um, that was very, very dirty. So I cleaned that all out. And so I did do that at first, but then today in this video, I just want to talk about the changes that I've done just to the machine and how it works to get um, something that looks like a patch edge like this. So when I got this machine, um, it I was lucky it came with the 1 8 inch finger on the needle plate. There's a little finger on the needle plate that controls the width of your stitches after you've stitched your fabric through. And I was just lucky some, I guess, that I think they come between like um, a little smaller than an eighth up to like three sixteenths or something, maybe even a quarter. So um, I was just lucky because I hear that the MG3U does a one eighth inch finger, which gives you a three sixteenths inch uh, threaded finished edge, which is the width of the um, fabric or thread after you're done. So um, that was one thing. If not, I might have have to have changed the needle plate and two feed dogs to get the right width and then then move on to try to make it do the patch edge. So what I have done to do the patch edge is um, I have got new stitch cams and there's two stitch cams in this machine because it can do differential feeding where I can feed the front of the fabric and the back of the fabric at different speeds, but I am using the same speed. So I tried uh, 28 stitches per inch and I tried 30 stitches per inch. And I have to say that I like the 30 stitches per inch better because it just gives you a little more thread and a little more coverage on your fabric. So it, it just gives you, a, I guess, a fuller edge. Um, then I removed the upper knife. Um, I just took the screw out and took the assembly off with the knife and the holder off. Then I did purchase from Marrow a patch edge guide. That was about $80, so that was the most expensive part. Um, if you need to purchase stitch cams to change your stitches per inch, they're about like $20 each, I guess. Um, so you need two of those. So that's $40 plus $80 for the guide. So it's about $120 to do this conversion. Um, okay, so I bought the patch edge guide and I put that in and I have still shots. I'll show you some still photos of everything um, after the video. Um, I took the foot off. I actually removed the foot from the foot holding arm. I, I don't know what you call it. Um, so I'll show you that in the video where I actually took the foot off, but I'm still using the arm as a pinpoint pressure to hold my fabric down. Um, then I reduce the foot pressure as much as possible. And then um, I have a floss thread in the uh, lower looper. No, upper looper. I have a floss thread in the upper looper. And you can see on my thread stand here, um, this, this is a floss thread. It's a non-stranded thread. And it's, uh, this is Mauser Silk Rayon Floss Thread. Um, it's from India. I use it with my chain stitch machines. This is a serger thread and this one is a serger thread. So I'm using two black serger threads and then the floss in the upper looper. Sorry, I misspoke earlier. So um, I'm just gonna give you a quick demonstration doing a patch 
and then I'll give you some still photos. I do want to say that I did attempt to purchase the feed dog and needle plate for the MG3U. They are not compatible with this machine, do not fit on this machine. I was unable to use them. Um, so the changes I've made are switching to 28 or 30 stitches per inch, two cams, uh, so two 28 cams or two 30 cams. Then I removed the upper knife, I removed the lower knife and put in the patch edge guide. I removed the foot, reduced the foot pressure and put floss in the upper looper, okay? So I'm gonna give you a quick demo on the patch and then I'm gonna give you some still shots that sort of just give close-ups of the machine and what's going on. Okay, thanks for watching. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see this. Um, I last stopped on, on this patch here and the needle happens to be down. So I'm gonna rotate the hand wheel until the needle comes up and is on the way down. I usually just like to make sure I'm starting with a, you know, a nearly complete stitch. On the marrow machine, the hand wheel turns in the opposite direction of a sewing machine. So I've got my little circle of fabric here and I don't have a chain on this, so I reach around and I'm pushing down on the lever in the back, um, which lifts the foot up. So you can see I have my uh, foot holder arm, but no foot. And then, I'm sorry, it's a really loud clutch motor, but I'm gonna get started going around in a circle and hopefully this works out well. My clutch motor is really um, not a great clutch motor. So, um, and I'm new at doing this, so I, th I think if you just sort of put your finger here and let it go, it will work okay. I can see I'm not, not doing real great because I'm trying to talk at the same time. My clutch motor's making a lot of noise. So this is my edge guide right here. What I found um, is you take the, the place you started and you just push it under. And then I'm going to continue going around. And when I get back to the end, I go over the end like a little bit. And then I turn it till the needle comes up. And I push the foot up a little bit and I pull the fabric away. Um, I guess you need to make sure the looper comes up. I pull the fabric away and then I just chain it off. Okay. I'm going to cut. Let me okay. I had to relocate the phone down on the table. So that was my demonstration of sewing a patch edge. It wasn't perfect. It wasn't great. But um, that's, that's my machine that I attempted to do a conversion to do patch edges um, just using a piece of scrap uh, fabric. Okay. Thanks for watching, guys.